all you get in this box is this one wire and then this other wire. So I literally paid 450 Canadian dollars for two wires. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'll try to make this video as detailed as possible because I know that Jake the Garden Snake did the same thing, but his video led to a lot of confusion. So yeah, I think we're just gonna start off by taking off this right panel. I think it's on this side of the bike. And then uh, we'll see how it goes, because I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. But uh, together, we'll learn. And uh, oh yeah, um, there is a really good chance that this engine might blow up by the end of the day. Let's get started. Which is too small for this socket. Great. Don't lose this washer right here. Now don't just start yanking on this panel because it won't come off because there's one more thing. There is actually a small tab right underneath this plastic right here. All you have to do is just press it in. There we go. And it should pop right out. There we go. Okay, so now you can actually pry this panel off. Be really careful because these plastic tabs might break really easily. I've done this only once, so don't judge me. There we go. So once you get that panel off, this is the ECU right here. All you have to do is just undo this rubber tab and it comes out without a single problem. This was the easy part by the way. Now it's the hard part. So yeah, just push down on the metal tab right here and it should just pop off, hopefully. There we go. Boom. This was the easy part by the way. Now we have to put wires into this connector right here, which is gonna be a pain in the ass. I'm gonna go print out some instructions and then we'll start from there. As well, the tune that I'll be loading up onto this bike requires me to actually take off the snorkel. Hopefully I don't have to lift the tank up to just remove it. I think you just pull it. Try to not cut yourself with the gas tank. There we go. Now that the snorkel was out, more air is gonna go into the air filter. Many of you might ask, why won't you just get a new air filter like the high flow one? In my opinion, I don't really think that those high flow air filters give you that much more power. So what I'm gonna do is actually leave this one in for a couple of weeks and then I'm gonna put in the high flow one and then I wanna see if it actually makes a difference and whether if you need to spend $100 on just a piece of foam. Now make sure you run this cable first before putting wires into this connector because otherwise, most likely you'll have to lift the tank up to get this connector in. So this is gonna be much easier for you. There we go. With this connector, it's just gonna sit right here. So if I wanna make changes to the tune or to the ECU, I'll I won't have to take off this panel. All I have to do is just take off the seat and plug it in, in here. So in order for you to put these wires into this connector, you actually have to take a look inside. And as you guys can see right here, there's two tabs up top. Don't push them in, but push them downwards. There we go, there's one and there's two. And now these pins are unlocked. Now looking at instructions, we have to remove the little dust covers in the connector. So what I'm talking about is actually these little gray dust covers right here. So there's this red little button right here, which says that this is row one. So we need to take out pin number six. We count wires by one, two, three, four, five. And the sixth one is actually the dust cover. All you have to do is just take a paper clip or something and just try to pry it out. 
which isn't as easy as it looks, but there we go. Now go ahead and take your small pliers and try to pull it out. Oh no, it went back in. No, oh God. Oh my God. Now what just happened to me is the dust cover actually went all the way inside and doesn't look that there is any way to get it. What I'll try to do is actually use this wire right here and try to push it up from the other side. Oh God. One, two, three, four, five, six. And hopefully I can just push it out. Yes. Thank God, I got scared there for a little. So for the second plug, it's actually number 13. One, two, three, 11, 12, 13. So it's the fourth from the left. I'll try to use this pick to take it out, but there's a possibility that it might go in, in even farther. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the wire again. After freaking 15 minutes of searching for this, all you have to do one two three four and it should pop right out there we go so yeah don't use a pick just use a piece of wire and push it from the bottom way easier all right the last one is going to be a little bit more difficult because it's right in the middle so it's the sixth one in the middle one two three four five six there we go finally got it try to pull it out there we go all right, now try to not mess this up. The yellow wire will go into number six. There's this little sharp tab. It actually goes to the front side. So all we have to do is just go and put this into number six. It should go right in there, just like that. And push it all the way down. There we go. So the yellow wire is in number six, which is done, very nice. The red one is gonna go into position 13. Remember the sharp little tab that faces to the front. Just throw that in there. There we go. Yeah, as soon as you put them all the way in, they won't come out for some reason. So that's good. And the last one is the orange one, which goes into position 22, right behind there. There we go. It's going in. All the way down you hear like a little click and now it's, it won't come out perfect now double triple quadruple check all your wires now i went ahead and took solid like seven minutes or maybe 10 minutes to just triple quadruple check if the wires are in the right spot now all we have to do hopefully you guys can see all we have to do is just push the bottom tabs up upwards not in but up there's one hopefully there's two there we go perfect pull on the wires make sure they don't come out one two and then the last one perfect now all we have to do is connect this ground wire onto any part of the frame which conducts electricity and just screw it in there there we go that's perfect now we can tuck all of that in there, no problem. Now take the brains of your bike, give it a nice wipe. And this should just plug right in there. Use zip ties if you need to, which I'm probably gonna do. I'm gonna go take the zip tie and just wrap it around the all the wires so they don't pop out later on. There we go, that's perfect. Great, now finally the hardest part is done. Now all we have to do is just plug in our computer, load up the software and tune the bike. Take this USB cable, plug it into your computer right there. And now we're just gonna connect this connector into this connector. Okay, so you just have to pull this cap off. Thank God. I thought they gave me the wrong connector. Nice, it's time to start. Great. So make sure that you have enough battery in your computer. We're gonna open up the software. I'm gonna go ahead, put the key in. Don't turn it on yet. So I'm gonna go into the um, into unrestricted ECU images for Yamaha and then Yamaha FZ MTL7 2015 to 2017. 
Now, this is my problem. I, I have a 2016 Canadian version of the FZ07 and it's none of these ones. So should I risk it or should I just call the company? What's gonna be happening is you'll have a bunch of ECU maps right here, specific, uh, specifically made for uh, different ECUs for the FDL7. There's a sticker on the ECU, just match it to one of these in the list. So it's 2RC8591. 2RC8591. So 2017 FDL7 US. So this is the one I'm gonna use, the US version for the 2017 FDL7. So the file has been downloaded, it's on the left hand side. So now we can actually make our modifications to the things that we wanna change. So disable angel diesel cut. I actually don't like the engine braking, I just wanna coast sometimes. So I'm actually gonna disable it, which is already on true. And now all we have to do is actually load in our power commander map that will match the setup of our motorcycle. So I have an Nakrapovich exhaust with a stock air filter with the snorkel removed. So I'm gonna download that specific one and I'm gonna load it up into the software. So now what I'm gonna do is actually go on the Power Commander site. Select make, let's go Yamaha, which should be the last one probably, yep. Select model uh, FZ07, select year 2016. And there we go, now we have different maps. So what I have is Acropovic stock exhaust with an air filter, stock air filter, with the snorkel removed from the air box. So that's the one I'm gonna download, 22065007. If you guys are wondering, there we go, it's downloading, just gonna download it to my desktop so I can find it easier and save. Now all I have to do is just go on the PC fuel import, click on that, extract fuel table from file and go onto my desktop and there it is. There's my PVM file, PVM. Double click on that. There we go, now it's in there. Apply table to fuel maps. Boom, successfully applied. I can close the window now. I can close everything up and that's it. Now all I have to do is just go to the device and then write ECU. All right, so now just double check everything. Let's go to the device and then write ECU. Connect ECU harness or key on. So I gotta turn the key on. Fuel pump is priming, click OK, uh, I guess yes, disconnect ECU, harness or key off. So now I gotta turn this off, click OK, connect ECU harness key on. For some reason the fuel pump hasn't turned on now. Connected, analyzing ECU, installing FT module, I don't know what that is. Hopefully it's doing the right thing. Okay, this is taking a while. It's kind of scary. Okay, it's writing, it's writing the ECU. So that means all the wires are actually connected. Now all I have to wait. It's gonna take probably another like four minutes. Hopefully my computer doesn't shut down or uh, it's gonna be bad. All right, it's almost at 100. Holy shit, the fuel pump went on. Right, successful, you might disconnect. All right. And now we can finally disconnect. There we go. There we go. And now let's hope to God that it will start. The fuel pump is working, which is good. It's in neutral. I'm actually so happy that the engine didn't blow up. Everything seems to be running good. I'm gonna go put the bike back together the same way I took it apart. I'm gonna put on my GoPro and we're gonna go for a ride. Now, I'm gonna get out of this area real quick. I won't give it any gas. I'll just give it a little bit, like not at all, just to get out on the main street and then I'll finally give it a pull. 
to actually see how it feels. Obviously, I, I disabled the injection diesel cut. I disabled, I don't know. I pretty much made it so it's, there's less engine braking. So I'm going to feel that probably right away. But the actual power, I'll feel it right after I get on the main street. All right, the first thing I noticed right away is the fact that there's no engine braking. This is amazing. There's no engine braking. Okay, I think it sounds a little bit different too. I think it sounds a little bit different. Let's do a downshift. Okay, yeah, it definitely sounds different. And there's no no more pops, which is good because when there's pops, that means your your bike is running a little bit lean. But okay, let's do this. Let's give it a little pull in second gear. Jeez, so many wasps everywhere. All right, let's do this. Okay, it sounds different. All right, so finally, we're at an intersection. We're gonna give it a pull in first gear. We're gonna wait for this car to pass so we can catch up too quick. All right, no coppers. Okay, first gear pull. Yep. It definitely has more pull. I can feel the wheel coming up in every gear now. Now, is it a significant increase uh, I'm not sure yet okay okay never mind it has way more power than I thought yeah okay so definitely noticing the acceleration first gear no engine braking really good let's do an acceleration 